The preliminary hearing for Michael Jackson's doctor resumed just a few minutes ago. There aren't as many members of the Jackson family in the courtroom today. We've got some video here of LaToya Jackson's arrival. We understand her sister Janet also there. Uh, also outside the courthouse, our own Beth Harris, the session correspondent. Uh, Beth, uh, give us a, an idea of, of where we're going today in, in terms of witnesses, how much more we have to go with, and, and where you think the prosecution is going to finish things up. Well, let me tell you, Randy Jackson is also in the courtroom, but we haven't seen Catherine Jackson today. And it may be because among the next and final witnesses will be someone from the coroner's office to talk about the autopsy of Michael Jackson. And it's not unusual for family members, especially mothers and fathers, to stay out of the courtroom when they are hearing about an autopsy on their child. Now, it's unclear if the siblings will stay in the courtroom. Uh, we don't have a communication right now uh, about what is going on inside, if indeed someone from the coroner's office is on the stand. But I can tell you that someone from that office will be among the final witnesses. Now, things may wrap up today. I just ran into the PIO for the DA's office, the public information officer, and she said things could wrap up today. So in addition to someone from the Emmy's coroner's office will be at least one, maybe more, medical expert who will talk about a host of things uh, from the prosecution's point of view that Dr. Marie did wrong, that deviated, was below the standard of care expected of a physician. And what are you hearing, Beth, from people who are attending this hearing? What are folks saying? Well, I must tell you that there is an organization called Justice for the number four MJ that has a presence here every day and they are participating in the public lottery and the founder of that organization who runs it and is mobilizing the forces spoke to in session yesterday and talked about this case and had some very interesting rather legal things to say. Let's listen. We work daily in Michael Jackson's community and we are very well aware of how the public perception and how angry the fans are about the charging in this case. It, you know, there is so much implied malice in this case. It wasn't an accident when Murray walked into that room that night and hooked Michael up to an IV. It wasn't an accident when he walked out of the room. It wasn't an accident when he gave him possibly 10 times the amount of propofol that he admitted to police. It wasn't an accident when he lied to the EMTs and the emergency room doctors. None of this was an accident, and involuntary manslaughter implies that it is, and this is not a case that's an accident. This organization, which is very powerful in terms of a fan base for uh, Michael Jackson, believes that implied malice, an element of second degree murder, one type of second degree murder, is evident here, is in existence. They believe that the district attorney's office should have charged second degree murder, and not involuntary manslaughter. And that's why she was able to list a host of things she believes supports implied malice, an element of second degree murder where the theory is a depraved or uh, conscious disregard for human life. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, she could perhaps, uh, you know, make an application for a law degree. makes a, a compelling argument there, but obviously uh, the state has their theory. Beth Karras, outside the courthouse in L.A., we'll check back in with you with more details from the preliminary hearing for Conrad Murray, as Beth reports, could finish up today. Moving on.